All right, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a pretty unique book lined up for you guys. It's a memoir that has been pretty popular recently. You might remember her from iCarly, but today we're diving into Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mom Died book. So it really is quite the title, and today we'll be uncovering what's inside of this, what I would say very, very intriguing memoir. So before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more book reviews like this. Thank you so much, we'll get right into it. Okay, so I wanted to very quickly summarize the book in three sentences. Okay, so the first is that Jeanette's life, although it appears like fine and perfect on the surface, really hides like a chaotic journey that she went through. Um, definitely unusual journey, which is just really interesting because I think to us she just seems like another child star with a seemingly not normal but normal life for a child star. and. Yeah, that really just wasn't the case. Like there was so much going on behind the scenes that we did not know about. Second, I think that her story really illustrates um, what the healing recovery from both emotional and physical trauma can look like and just really showing like how complicated, messy, and non-linear it actually is. And lastly, I think this book really does a good job of shedding some light on the lives of child actors and the unjust treatment that they received not only from their parents but the companies that they've worked with such as like Nickelodeon or Disney Channel and I think this should really urge us to question this like child acting and entertainment industry. Okay so this here is the book really nice cover um really nice hardcover here and it is 320 pages and I think the genre that this book kind of falls under is autobiography, biography, and memoir. Okay, and how I found this book. I found this book through my partner, actually. She was the one that recommended it to me. I think she must have seen it like making a scene somewhere on Instagram or social media. She heard about it in some way, sent it to me, and I think as soon as I heard about it or read the title like the title really piqued my interest because yeah it's a very strong title I'm glad my mom died and I think I felt like some sort of personal connection to this book because I grew up watching shows like iCarly and even a little bit of Sam and Cat so the fact that I knew her beforehand and also the strong title is what made me add it to my to read later list and yeah, I finally got around to it. Okay, so next, who should read this book? So I think even if you have never heard of Jeanette McCurdy or never seen a single episode of iCarly or Sam and Cat, this book can still definitely be for you. And I would recommend this book to anyone that is either a fan of Jeanette McCurdy because um, if you've heard of her it would be really interesting to like learn more about her life growing up as a child actor and also like everything downstream of that that happened after. Yeah, it's just really interesting to read about someone that you grew up watching on TV that seemingly had like a normal life or a good life being a child actor. I think you should also read this book if you're interested in celebrity memoirs because this is a really good one. I just think she had a crazy life, a crazy upbringing, especially if you're interested in like the lives of child actors because they're often crazy, but I think hers is even crazier and just, yeah, bizarre. Um, and I think the writing in this book is really great. I really enjoyed reading it. So if you're into those types of books, I think you could really um, love this one too. I think you could also like this book if you're someone that has um, complicated family relationships. I think it could be really beneficial to read 
about some of her experiences in her life with her family and her very challenging upbringing. And yeah, I think this book can definitely add some relatable experiences because it is mostly about her relationship with herself, but also her relationship with her mother and how her relationship with herself was impacted by her relationship with her mother. Next, you should definitely read this book if you're at all curious about the lives of child actors. So this book shares like the less glamorous aspects of being a child actor and being within the entertainment industry. So if you're at all interested in uh, the struggles and challenging lives of child actors, then this is a perfect read for you. Lastly, I think you'll really enjoy this book if you're at all interested in personal growth or self-recovery. So this book really does focus on things like self-discovery, self-healing, and overcoming very challenging personal struggles. Okay, so very, very quickly before I get on with the rest of the review, I wanted to give a quick note or like disclaimer that this book really touches on some sensitive and challenging subject matter. So all readers should be prepared for a very candid exploration of difficult experiences. And specifically, it includes struggles with abuse, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, and addiction. So please just keep that in mind. If those topics are triggering for you to be reading, then maybe this book really isn't for you. But I just wanted to quickly mention that before I get on with the rest of this video. Okay, so I'm Glad My Mom Died is a deeply personal memoir written by Jeanette McCurdy, who is best known for her roles in iCarly and Sam and Cat. So in this very raw and candid account, she offers glimpses into her life as a child actor and the complex and emotionally packed relationship that she had with her overprotective and narcissistic mother. This book takes readers on a chronological journey of Jeanette's life, highlighting her early auditions, her family dynamics, and all of the unusual aspects of her upbringing. So her mother's influence on her life is both shocking and deeply disturbing because she basically forced Jeanette into an acting career as a child, and she also introduced her into very harmful habits, such as calorie restriction, which ultimately is what led to her developing an eating disorder. Jeanette's story dives into the challenges of growing up on television, her struggles with OCD, her struggles with her body image, as well as alcohol abuse, and the emotional roller coaster of both loving and resenting her mother. So the title, I'm Glad My Mom Died, conveys a complex mix of emotions that Jeanette had following the death of her mother as she's recognizing all of the emotional trauma that she is left with, and also as she's embarking on this new journey of self-healing and recovery. This book provides an unfiltered look into a life marked by pain, resilience, and ultimately hope. Okay, so now that you guys have a little bit of a summary about what the book is about and what exactly happens in this story, I wanted to get a little deeper into some of the notes that I have on this book and get into a discussion of it. So first, I wanted to begin with the structure of the book and Jeanette's writing style. Okay, so this book is split into two parts, with the first part being before Jeanette's mom died and the second part after Jeanette's mom died. And as I mentioned before, the story is told chronologically and each chapter represents a different event that was significant at that point in her life. And honestly, it feels like we're reading her diary entries because these chapters are just so like deeply personal 
and detailed and we kind of get a sense of how she's feeling or how she was feeling as these things were happening um, which is just it really blows my mind like how well she's able to remember and retell these specific events in her life like her first audition or um, when she got her first deal or her first kiss on screen just really amazes me how well she's able to retell it and give us a sense of how she was feeling at that point in her life. So because of the structure of this book where like one chapter is one short story or kind of like a diary entry of what happened that day, I think the book could feel a little bit choppy. So I kind of enjoyed this because I felt like I never really knew what to expect. I didn't know where the book was going to go in the next chapter and this was really interesting but also a little frustrating sometimes when she's telling a story or a specific event in her life and then it just stops with the end of the chapter. Like I almost wish I would have heard more about other parts of the story but they kind of just end. So that was the only downside of the way it was written but Overall, I think I enjoyed it because it kept me on my toes and yeah, you really just learn about so many different things in her life. So after reading this book, I think that Jeanette McCurdy is a very talented writer and this book is filled with a lot of dark humor. So I found it really interesting that she was able to tell such traumatic and like horrific events while also incorporating some of her humor in it. And I think this never felt insensitive. If anything, I think it really just adds to the overall um, story because it almost makes it a little bit easier to read about these terrible events that are happening or terrible things that are happening in her life. So yeah, I really enjoyed her writing and her humor, the way she was able to retell some of these stories and it was honestly really interesting because I never thought of her as a writer. I more so thought of her as just an actor. Um, so I was really surprised and impressed by this book. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to get into is what is this title about and was her mother really this bad? So yes, honestly, Jeanette's mother really was that bad. I had heard a little bit about this book before reading it. I knew her mother was like overprotective and narcissistic, but I didn't realize how bad her mother treated her and yeah, just how bad that some of the things that happened to her were or how controlling she was. So that was like really, really sad to, to hear about and to read about. But I just wanted to share some of the things that Jeanette mentions about her mother. So the first really big one is that she basically like talked Jeanette into becoming a child actor at the age of six. Like Jeanette didn't really have a say. She kind of just went with it because she knew that this was her mother's dream and her grandparents never let her mother pursue something like this that she loved. But her mom was gonna be so much better of a mother and like let her pursue her dream of acting. And it's just so sad, like she's only six and you know, as a six year old, all she wants is attention and love from her mother and to make her mother happy. So she just goes with it. Next, I think the mom is just like extremely manipulative and controlling and every bad thing that she does to Jeanette um, or every thing that she does that's a little bit too much. She always uses the excuse as like, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this because I love you. Um, so it really just like brainwashes and tricks Jeanette into thinking that my mom's doing this and my mom is like this because she loves me and she truly just wants the best for me. And I think this is something that a lot of people can relate to actually. Next, this is, um, probably something that most people have already heard about so I don't really think it's a spoiler but the fact that Jeanette's mother was like showering her up until the age of like 16 I think her and one of her siblings it just seems like a huge invasion of privacy and honestly just like along the lines of physical and almost sexual abuse and 
yeah, reading about that made me really uncomfortable and it was really, it was really sad to hear. Adding on to that, we learn that it is her mother that introduces Jeanette into the idea of calorie restriction so that she maintains a like small figure and is able to play more like child actor parts. Um, so that she always looks young and like never looks like a grown woman um, because she's just so petite because she's not eating that much. Um, and this ultimately leads to like her harmful relationship with food and tracking everything that she's eating up into the point where she develops bulimia, uh, which she struggles with for a long time throughout the book. Honestly, I don't know if we need to keep talking about all of the bad things that her mother was doing to her, but something that I thought was also hugely controlling and just like overstepping boundaries was the way that when Jeanette was moving into her very first apartment, now that she was making some money, she was really excited, you know, because this is something she was able to do for herself. She gets to move into this new cool apartment that is hers but then it ends up being her and her mother's. Like her mother ends up living there at a point or just spending so much time there that it's basically their apartment when it was supposed to be Jeanette's apartment. So yeah, that was just another thing that was really sad because her mother's just like really holding on to her so tight and not letting her like go off, grow up and become her own person. And when she does like start growing up, becoming her own person, dating, her mom like hears that she's on vacation with this guy in Hawaii and goes absolutely crazy and starts sending her all of these messages and I think it's emails or something, but like very nasty and just the way that her mother talks to her was terrible and really like an overreaction. I understand that as a mother she wants to like you know, be there to support her and make sure her daughter's doing the right thing. But the way that she was talking to her and the words that she was using was all just like verbally abusive. It really, it really is so bad. I think her mother was really bad to her. So I know I had learned a little bit about like other child actors. I think I saw an interview, like a diary of a CEO interview with Cole Sprouse from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And he was also mentioning that he, got into an act, that he got into acting at a very young age, him and his twin. And he mentions how his mom is narcissistic and they don't have a relationship now because of the way she was or is and yeah, that seemed bad enough, but Jeanette's story, like her mom is not just narcissistic, she's emotionally, physically, and like mentally abusive. So yeah, this, this story was like pretty crazy to me and honestly just so sad because the thing that I think about the most is like how controlling and manipulative her mother was and how much she brainwashed her into thinking that she was doing everything because she loved her and she cared about her. Like Jeanette didn't even question that her mom loved her and like cared about her and was doing everything because it was the best for her. And it's just sad, right? Because mothers and, well, parents in general, but especially mothers, you think are supposed to like protect and really care for their children. And you shouldn't have to question the motives of your parents at all. But unfortunately, her mom was like really taking advantage of this and her relationship with Jeanette, kind of for her own good or for her own dream of becoming a child actor or having a daughter that is a child actor. So yeah, as Jeanette grows up and starts experiencing life a little bit more, she starts to realize that some of the things that her mom's doing, like showering her or calling her 10 times a day, is not normal. She's realizing that it is sad to her, but her life is a little bit easier when her mom's not there because her mom's sick, so she wasn't able to go to a lot of things with her. Um, and she feels this like sense of relief, like things are easier when her mom's not there. She can be a little bit more herself. She can eat how she wants. Um, she does feel guilty for it, right? Because that's how her mom trained her to be. But 
yeah, she feels like this new sense of independence once her mom is gone. So after her mother's death, Jeanette really does still struggle with her eating disorder and that gets like into a pretty dark place for her. She's also using alcohol at this point to cope, so becomes really dependent on it. And I think I read somewhere that she was having like eight to nine shots of hard alcohol each night, which is just really a lot. And like goes to show how she was doing at that point, how much she was struggling. So yeah, I think somewhere at this point, she just really hits a low and then she decides to go seek help. So she goes to a therapist and I think it's once she's in therapy that it's revealed to her that this eating disorder that she has and these harmful habits that she has were taught to her by her own mother and like coming to terms with that as you could imagine was very difficult for Jeanette um right because you just believe that your mom she thought her mom honestly was her best friend and was doing everything for her own good like to protect her so yeah she's left with this strange feeling of like really loving and missing her mom at times but also like hating and resenting her mom because her mom left her with all of these things that she's now dealing with in her life that was all just because her mom said something to her. It's a tough story to read, for sure. Okay, so I wanted to go over like some of the things that I thought was really relatable in this book. And I think the first like theme is struggles with body image because I think this is something that many people can relate to. So yeah, she starts struggling with it, um, you know, around the age of 13 as she's getting older and maturing a little bit. But I think it's definitely like made worse by the fact that she is on television and she's getting a lot of like weird and honestly inappropriate comments from people that were on set with her. Another theme that I think is really important and relatable is the fact that she starts using alcohol as a coping mechanism. I think this is something many people can relate to, unfortunately, and yeah, it's really important to read about, I think. And she is sober now, I believe, as are lots of other celebrities and stuff. It seems to be the trend now, which is really good. So yeah, she is really working on that part of her life. And the last theme is like the constant feeling that you need to be pleasing your parents or making your parent happy. And I think this definitely happens more with parents that are a little bit over controlling where there's a lack of boundaries, a lack of privacy. And I think this really leads to like people developing a tendency of people pleasing. Um, or just not respecting their boundaries in future relationships or even work environments. Okay, so those are the parts of the book or the common themes that I thought were really relatable for everyone. You know, at least a few of those must be a little bit relatable. But now for the things that stood out to me as like very unrelatable, not something that I or like many other people have had much experience in and that is like the world of child acting or being in the entertainment industry, especially as a kid. So yeah, as someone that was clearly not a child actor but grew up watching shows like Disney Channel or channels like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, you know, even iCarly was something that I was really into. You know, we just grew up watching these kids on television and you don't really question what their lives must be like. You just think, cool, they get to be on television, they get to be famous, have all this money. Even now, I kind of look back at like the people that I grew up watching on television and think like, wow, their lives are so different. They've made so much money, they're probably like set for life, never have to work again, and we'll be okay. Like, how awesome must that be? But you don't realize like all of the dark sides about being in that industry and growing up with your life being so public. So while this book does talk a little bit about Jeanette's um, experience being on Nickelodeon and working with the director of her show, she, kind of doesn't avoid like all of the drama around Nickelodeon and this director. She doesn't mention it too much. I actually think she doesn't even mention the director's name. But based on a few uncomfortable experiences 
or like weird characteristics that she shares about the director. This kind of encouraged me to do my own research on what her experience was like, what the drama is surrounding Nickelodeon. And honestly, after doing my own reading and everything, it just makes it so hard to like be in support of those Nickelodeon and Disney Channel shows, just knowing how unfair those child actors are treated and how they're in that role without like being old enough to really know what they're getting themselves into or a lot of the times just doing it because that's what their parents told them they should do or that's what their parents decided for them. Yeah, it makes it really tough to support like young kids being on television. I think similarly, this also goes with like young kids and even babies that are on their like parents or families, Instagram accounts or like YouTube channels. Yeah, I feel like people probably have really different thoughts on, on that and whether or not that is okay. But yeah, another thing that stood out to me um, reading about Jeanette's life was just how much she lacked this like normal childhood and experience growing up because her life was really just so public, but at the same time, very isolated because the only friends that she had were the friends on her cast, like in her show. But really it sounded like the only person she had a really like close relationship with that maybe understood where she was coming from was Miranda Cosgrove, who is her co-star. But yeah, it kind of just goes to show like maybe how hard it is to make and have friends. Being someone that is a child actor, they don't really have like the normal everyday experience that everyone else that goes to a normal school has, right? So yeah, that was interesting to learn about and not really something I had thought about too much, honestly. Then there's the more like icky parts of growing up on television, like the fact that she had to have her very first kiss on camera um, with someone that she didn't really choose, right? Because it was just someone that she had to for the scene. And this was not only like her first kiss, but it was her second, her third, her fourth. And it was just like open for everyone to judge and very uncomfortable. And she clearly wasn't ready and still had to do it, which is really sad. And yeah, I don't think that should really be something that is part of the job, especially for a child actor that is not comfortable with it or not really excited about it. So yeah, in general, I thought it was just really interesting to read about the lives of these child actors because yeah, I think generally we all just think like fame and money must be so awesome. Um, when in reality, like fame and money, so many other problems come with it and it doesn't solve all of your problems. If anything, it just creates more. But yeah, we don't often get like this open, raw, personal and like honest look or insight into an actor's life, right? She's one of the first, um, to write a book this like deeply personal. There are so many struggles that not only Jeanette, but other child actors and people in the entertainment industry, even like really successful musicians, right? They also go through a lot of these same struggles. And yeah, it just helps to know that what we see online or on television is not the whole truth. It's not everything about that person. They have lives and struggles that you don't even know about and don't even see. And for me, it was really surprising because I grew up watching her on television and from just seeing her on television, there's no way I could have guessed that she went through half of this stuff because her character was meant to be someone like funny who didn't really care that much about certain things. So yeah, it's interesting to read about. Okay guys, I think I talked a lot now and I hope this video is not getting too long, but that is a wrap on this book, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. So if you've read this book or heard about it, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I read all of the comments, so if you have some time, let me know what you thought about this video. And as always, if you found this book review interesting or helpful, please give it a big like and share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it. Okay, so stay tuned for more great content coming up on this channel, especially as we get into December. We have a little bit of a surprise for you guys and until then happy reading peace